Today was really hectic. Uh, I wasn't able to get much footage, but I wanted to make a video, so I put a call out on Twitter asking for questions to do a Q&A video. It's been a long time since I did one of these, so here we go. Got some good questions. Calvin Thomas UK asks, do you watch cartoons? What makes a good cartoon for you? Uh, I do watch cartoons. Not as much as I used to, but I do. Um, I really liked the new Voltron series. I liked it a lot over at DreamWorks. I have a few friends that work on it. Loved the new Trolls movie. I didn't think I would at all, but I loved it. It was really, really good. And of course, all the Disney and Pixar stuff. Moana was really fun. And Zootopia, I probably have watched that 10 times in the last year. And then, of course, my show that I work on, which was just announced today, it's uh, Wizard of Oz. It's Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. I can't wait for you guys to be able to check it out. Nathan Appleby asks, do you still draw in your spare time or does art just seem like a job now? Um, tricky question. <laughs> That's kind of why I started doing this 100 Days of Making Comics video series is because I did stop drawing in my spare time uh, and it did start to feel like a job and I wanted to break out of that. So, yes, now I draw in my spare time. For the most part, art does not feel like a job. Like, I get paid to draw all day, so it's not like I'm flipping burgers or something. I actually really enjoy it. Um, <laughs> Edwin McGarren asks, what's the best way to go back to drawing and being creative? Oh. Mm. Well, that's kind of why I'm doing this video series, is showing what my struggle is, trying to get back into drawing and being creative, because... Uh, I go through it too. I mean, this was probably the, like I said in the first episode of the 100 Days of Making Comics, this has been the low point of my creative career. And um, I needed to do something to get out of that. So I guess just watch these last few videos and see if that's something that um, helps you. Really, you just got to get the pencil moving and just stop thinking. You got to get out of your head. Maybe sign up for a drawing class or uh, go sketch with friends. He's got to do something. Hilda asks, how to handle drawing real people? I'm too anxious because I'm afraid it won't look like them or that they will think it's ugly. Um, good question. The best way to get over it is just to do it. I guarantee they will look ugly and they won't look like the person. <laughs> That's kind of how it works. Um, you don't have to show it to them. You can keep it in your sketchbook. Uh, the more you do it, the better you get, and the more comfortable you get with it. You just kind of got to get past that uh, awkward, nervous phase. And, you know, the real trick to it is you don't have to stare at them while you're drawing. You're not like this. Like, you don't have to stare at them while you're drawing. You're not like this. Like, woo! Jake Kaplan asks, oh, hey, Jake. Jake was one of our interns on Wabbit at Warner Brothers. Uh, how much do you feel your emotions affect your work? Do you draw happier characters when you're feeling happier? Hmm, interesting question. When I'm drawing angry characters, I make angry faces. <laughs> but how do my emotions affect my work? That's a different kind of thing. I guess what I said was how my drawings affect my emotions. But really, how does my emotions affect my work? Um, it is harder to draw when I'm feeling down and depressed. Um, yeah. <laughs> It seems like the more time passes between me thinking of drawing and actually drawing, the worse it gets. So sometimes I just got to schedule it in and, and show up with her and not think about it. Just go do it. Chelsea asks, can you talk about finding mentors, contacting someone to be a mentor in the animation industry, etc.? Thanks. That's kind of a tricky question because I've had people email me and ask me to be their mentor. And it's sort of like, out of the blue, you, somebody you've never talked to, ask calling somebody and asking them to be your boyfriend or girlfriend, and you've never met. It's kind of awkward. Um, you just kind of get to know people and, and get that FaceTime. You start to, like, if it's just through the Internet, it's just commenting on everything they do and being really supportive and encouraging. Uh, and they start to recognize your name popping up all over all of their social media. Um, the better route, I think, is actually going to conventions and meeting people in person and uh you, you like where i found most of my mentors is like going to the same show three or four years in a row talking to the same people 
and being really enthusiastic and genuine and taking notes when they give feedback and going home and applying the notes to my work, emailing them right away saying, I appreciate your feedback. This is what I did with it. Uh, I, can't, I look forward to seeing you again at the next show. And then after three or four years, they remember you and they remember all that stuff that you did and that you take feedback really well and that you're not a jerk. They're actually fun to talk to. And sometimes that turns into a friendship. And that's how that's what happened with me is I have several friends that way. Um, but you can't assume that just because you like somebody that they're going to turn into your mentor. <laughs> it just it just has to happen naturally over a long period of time. So but don't be intimidated by that. Like I have a whole video on my channel on uh, how to network and why artists don't get good, good feedback. They're people sketching episodes. And as I talk about this exact thing in there. So check those out. Twins Molina ask, hello, Molina twins. It's good to see you. <laughs> I see them around town all the time. Uh, there are many prolific artists that create art that is amazing and consistent. What is your advice to keep motivated and not burning out? Do it for the right reasons. You know, don't do art to get a job. Don't do art to impress anybody. Don't do art to make money. Those are all things that are side effects of doing what you love. And it shows in the work. Like if you really love what you do and you're, you're constantly getting better at it, um, the money will come, the jobs will come, the respect will come. But if you want those things, if that's what you're in it for, then uh, it makes it harder and harder. It's, it always seems like it's just out of your reach. Um, so avoiding burnout. If you're feeling burned out, it's most likely because you're not getting what you want out of it. And so you need to change what you want, you change your perspective on it and uh, find a different reason for doing it. RM Candy asks, you said in one of your videos you made comics in the past before you could draw. What was the genre of those comics? Uh, is bad? Is bad a genre? Because <laughs> uh, my first comic was a medieval fantasy story. Uh, my second was a cyberpunk um, detective story. Then I drew a comic about a little goth girl that turned to a fairy princess. And I'd done some steampunk stuff. I mean, it's been all over the map. I just did whatever interested me. Except for superheroes. I never really got into superhero comics. Drag asks, why is it difficult for some artists to break a style? I'm assuming, like, you're saying, like, it, an artist that draws anime, they have trouble getting out of that style. Or an artist that draws superhero, they have trouble getting out of that style. I think that's what you're saying with the question. Um, and I don't know. <laughs> I think it's more like you just need to expand your experience i usually tell people to start with drawing from real life um because that immediately breaks all the rules that you have in your head it's really difficult to capture that in a style because uh, people just move so much and so if you really want to get out of a rut of, of drawing the same way over and over start with drawing from real life you know draw draw what you observe kaishu Manella asks, any favorite spots in L.A.? Museums, restaurants, sites, etc. Something recent if it helps narrow it down. Uh, I really like the Americana Mall. It's a fun place to draw at. It's really pretty. Uh, that's in Glendale. And I love Burbank. Like everything in Burbank. It just feels like a movie set. Lauren asks, how do you start making money as an artist? <laughs> <laughs> you make something and have somebody buy it from you. Alex Ayer asks, will you actually inspire me to get back into art? My style and medium is also a tribute to you. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, I have goals to become an animator or architect. That's pretty, that's pretty diverse. <laughs> How can I begin to animate and become more proficient in Adobe programs? There are no shortcuts. I mean, well, there are, technically shortcuts because it's a program but literally there are no shortcuts to getting better at anything if you want to animate you've got to start animating if you want to be an architect you've got to start i mean i hope you're drawing already because that's yeah i suggest figuring out what you want to do get very very specific with it and start with the end in mind like what do you want to be doing 20 years from now uh because it sounds like you're picking goals that sound cool 
um, but you're not really sure what those jobs actually are. Figure out where you want to end up and reverse engineer it. Like how do, okay, what do I have to do to go from here to there? How do I become that person? And yeah, that'll get you a better start. I hope that helps. It's a very big question. <laughs> Austin Taylor asks, do you have any advice for creating interesting characters? Um, observing from real life. Like there, you can't make it up. People are just characters. Drawing people at Walmart, drawing people at the mall. You can't make that stuff up. Morphe asks, hey, Will, when is Love at Con? And will you be there this year? Ah, um, I'm assuming you're in West Texas. Love at Con is the last weekend in May. It's uh, May 27th to the 28th. That's Memorial Day weekend. And I will be there. It's uh, Saturday and Sunday. Lubbock is not the easiest place to get to, but if anybody wants, to, that's the only show I'm doing this year. So if anybody wants to meet me, that's probably the best place, unless you stalk me here in Burbank. And you can find more about that show at lubbockon.com. Lastly, Galaxy King asks, at Will Terrell, will you make more drawing advice? <laughs> yes, I think I will. Thank you guys for the great questions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Keep smiling.